Guess hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Oscar Outdoors. Join me in this one as we take on Storm Francis. Build up now. See how bad it gets. Right, so good morning, people. Quarter to two in the morning now. And I think it's about time that I got Dan back. Okay, so as in the intro, uh, I'm taking on Storm Francis um, with the English Woodsman and a gentleman we've come to lovingly know as Bushman Mick. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to get set up. Uh, the wind's come. The rain's come already, so we're going to get set up and I'll bring you back very, very shortly. Okay, so welcome back everyone. It's taken me an absolute age to set up. Um, I was setting up next to Mick, um, and then we just couldn't get the tarp configurations quite right. Um, I would have hindered him, he would have hindered me, so I've come and moved away now, so it gives a little bit more room, and obviously I'll get a little bit of peace and quiet from my snoring as well, which I've been told to do, but I don't believe him. Uh, so yeah, my setup tonight. Uh, I'm under the snug pack all weather shelter. Uh, this is the G1, and then I've got the snug pack hammock cocoon and the tropical hammock on the inside of that, and just a pillow. I've also brought with my sleep suit, but I've not got um, that in there at the minute, that's under the communal sort of area where we are at the minute in my rucksack. Uh, but what I've done now is I've, I've raised my ridge line, my structural ridge line, I've raised it so I've got more of a banana hang in the hammock. And then I can attach things to it. Obviously, you can see this is my uh, pound shop light. And then I've got on here the little all light ES1R. Or oh, something similar. Something similar. But yeah, all on this sort of washing line full of espinas. Yeah, so I'll show you what I've done outside and obviously to protect myself from Storm Francis. Uh, and then I'll go catch up and show you what we're going to have for tea. Okay, so this is the view from the head end of my hammock. I can see uh, my daisy chains running down there and then the hammock cocoon but what I've done here if I can sort of bring that into shot for you you can see these little espinas just clipped into pound shot bubbles giving me a bit of resistance but also closing in the ends as well to sort of keep the wind off me and keep the rain off me a little bit more than just having the tarp open at this end I've also tripled up my uh, pegging system so I've got a uh, one straight through the grommet of the tarp here about eight inches away got a secondary peg and then all the way up here got a third peg so i've got two backups should either of them fail so yeah you could probably see and hear that the wind's really picking up now you see on the tarp it's getting a, a bit of a, a good blowing uh, but yeah my personal gear today i've come out in the grizzly man patriot 6 uh, i've done a review on this so i'll leave that in the link in the description uh, but yeah, my full Patriot suit on and just a t-shirt underneath. Alright, so while I've been buggering about with my setup, taking it longest tonight, not usual for me, uh, Dan's got us going. So tonight, because we're in the, uh, the private woodland that we've got permission for, and we've said before, we're not allowed open fires here, uh, we brought out Dan's, what is it? Uh, F, no, 3F UL stove. 3F UL stove. Yeah, and obviously as you can see we've got some like barbecue briquette type things going on there so we're gonna have a barbecue during storm francis <laughs> can you beat that uh, but yeah food tonight we've uh, we've joined together uh, so dan went shopping for this and i went for the beer so dan got us uh, four hot and spicy pork loin steaks well package well yeah package uh, and then some barbecue beef kebabs and then a pack of bratwurst as well, some German sausage. Now, I don't know what he thinks we're going to be doing out here, or how long we're going to come for, but he's bought us that each. <laughs> so, but luckily, obviously, we're here till morning, and as I said earlier, Bushman Mix joined us as well. And we're not tight with his food, so we will share with him. <laughs> he says he's got chops. <laughs> We've all got chops. <laughs> but yeah, uh, when I get this sort of to a point where we can start to cook I'll bring you back okay as I said earlier um, Dan went food shopping and I went for more important stuff I went for beer yeah, so we've... Bit important. I like yours as well you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we've got two of these each and then also two strongbow dark fruit 
So four beers and that should see us right. Dan's just uh, prepping barbecue for us. He's uh, left weather at home though, he's brought rain instead of sunshine. Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, here we go, just getting some chops on, just manoeuvring them about. Uh, as I said earlier, this is the 3FUL stove and you can see it's got what? Eight chops, ten chops, what's on there? Yeah. Uh, eight, yeah. Yeah, eight chops on there and it's uh, covered it, so it's a monstrous bit of kit. I'm just glad that I didn't have to carry it in. Right, so I just brought you back while uh, Chef Dan is cooking. Uh, just to say thanks really to uh, one of my subscribers, Dan Howe. Yeah, he's kindly sent me this in the post. So this is a uh, Amora 511 limited edition 2020. Bright yellow. And it's going to be the first time I've used it, so it's his virgin use, mate. So thank you very, very much for that. I really do appreciate it. That's Dan Howe. So yeah, thanks very much. I'll see you in a bit. So this is uh, Dan, the English woodsman, set up. So he's in the OEX Bandicoot 2 tonight. Uh, I'm not going to open it up because I don't want to get any of his gear wet. Um, but I'll find out what his sleeping bag and what that is. And I'll, uh, in fact, I'll just throw you a link to his channel just up in top corner somewhere here now. And uh, you can go over and watch his version of this video. So I don't know if you remember, roughly around about six months ago, me and Dan came out and faced Storm Kira. Uh, and we're on the same location as that, but tonight obviously it's Storm Francis. Now just behind me, in this little gully, just about there, is the bet that I showed you right at the end of Storm Kira. I'll try and flash a little bit of that up on screen somewhere here now. Um, but that's quite low at the minute, so we'll obviously check on that in the morning and see if the, the levels have risen, see if um, you know, we're going to be anywhere near as bad as Storm Kira was. Yeah, Storm Francis reported to have around about 65 mile an hour winds. Uh, Storm Kira will hit 70, I believe, in this, this part of the world. Um, but yeah, 65 we've got expected. Let's see what happens and how we go. And uh, this is where Bushman Mick's going to be sleeping, but for now we've uh, commandeered it as like a, a bit of a mesh tent. So it's just a, a DD 4x4 tarp uh, going across the top of us. And then we've just used right in the centre, can you just see there? Uh, we've got a cent centre pole going up there and then shooting off. But yeah, we're just commandeering that while we cook. Uh, and then we'll help Mick set up his hammock and, and whatnot later on. Yeah, while I've been uh, buggering about again showing you all setups, Dan's been cooking and look at them. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, coming along really. Look at that. Juice is running through that, mate. Oh, it's all gas, Mick. Yeah, it's all gas, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, look at them, looking forward to them. Right, I'll bring you back shortly. Right, so Dan has been chef tonight. Oh, look at them. Looking forward to this, cheers Paul. Mm. Barbecue in the woods. Have you ever done What's the most inventive meal you've ever made out in the woods? I think mine's got to be the steak, chips and onion rings I did not so long back on my solo camp. Um, I'm not even like you that, have I? What's the most inventive meal you've ever made? I'll say this on my camp as well, so we got two going. Scotch is actually what's the most inventive meal that I've made. Well, one time we were doing a chicken cure, right? And uh, we, out, we didn't have enough chicken to go around off kids and me and Emma. But we had a pack of bacon. So I cut the bacon up, put it in with curry. And to this day, every time we have curry at home, kids always say, are oh, we having bacon? <laughs> and that's the truth. Now, it could be beef curry, chicken curry, whatever. The kids always want chopped bacon in it. Bacon curry? Yeah. And whatever else meat we use. You heard it here first, people. Bacon curry. Yeah, but other meat as well. <laughs> yeah. We try it. My kids absolutely love it. And we just did that because we didn't have enough meat to, you know, feed out a lot of us. We were fine, you know what I mean? But, yeah, that's a, a meal what stuck around the family table as well. <laughs> but they're, they're the times that you remember the most, aren't they? Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, as uh, Dan's just been saying, what's the most inventive meal that you've ever made? Uh, that's brilliant. Chicken and bacon curry, love it. Uh, but yeah, mine were the, again, the steak and chips out in the woods using obviously the oil and the frying pan and 
and whatnot. So yeah, right, I'm going to sit back and enjoy this because no one wants to sit and watch me eat, do they? I'll bring you back shortly. It's like starting to drop, so we'll down for the next hour or so. Yeah, we're just putting four on for now. But look at the glow of that charcoal, unbelievable. The right idea then briquettes me. Well it's better trying to light like, fire it and start yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. about wet wood and stuff. Mm. I'm gonna be YouTubers on a barbecue when they come through this. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Stone Francis barbecue. Yeah, exactly. Dan's uh, just turning these kebabs now, you can see that the wind's really starting to pick up and we're starting to lose daylight now, it's coming up 20 to 8 so it, it is cracking on a bit now but yeah, wind's picking up, rain's coming in bits and bats at the moment so I think it's going to be a long night just in hammocks well in my hammock and you're in a tent aren't you? Yeah. yeah, I think it might be uh, long nights Bring you back shortly. Alright, so yeah, I've had uh, another good night with Dan and Bushman Mick. Uh, what's that? Oh, my radio's going. Yeah, go on, mate. What are you doing? Uh, just recording at a minute. Can you see the uh, green light on the fence? Two seconds, I'll have a look. No, mate, I can't see you. Yeah, so uh, another good night with Dan and Bushman Mick. Um, you might have just seen a little bit of a clip with the radios. Um, and we brought them out tonight just to sort of test because we knew we weren't going to be sleeping sort of side by side against Storm Francis. Um, it's rained on and off all night. But we've just been sort of stood around the uh, little stove that we had just sort of keeping ourselves warm that way and keeping ourselves entertained trying not to you know let the weather defeat us and um, the big 4x4 tarps worked really well tonight so thanks bush band mick for uh, providing that shelter for us brilliant um yeah there's uh, no else to go now the only thing i'm going to do now is just bring you back if this storm picks up and it's scheduled to do so about midnight and it's just a little after 11 o'clock now so should be good uh, quite looking forward to it. i've not slept in a storm for a while but yeah storm francis all right see you in a bit starting to build up now see how bad it gets So good morning people, quarter to two in the morning now, and I think it's about time that I got Dan back. Right, so good morning people, 
it's quarter to two in the morning. Now, if you're a regular subscriber to the channel, you'll know that over the last couple of months, Dan has uh, been playing practical jokes on me and leaving me in the woods on my own in the morning. Okay, so this is going to be a mild one, but I'm going to get him back today. And Dan doesn't like little fiddly things, little clips, little things like that. So I brought with me just a small carabiner. I'm just going to go and carabiner in, into his tent. I know it's only a mild one. But it's the start of things to come. Right, I'm going to sneak down. I'm not going to record because it's too dark for you to see anything on it, but I'm going to sneak over and do it now. Right, so that didn't work. So because of the way that the um, bandicoot zipped, there's two zips on like the front porch. I've only brought the one carabiner to do it with. So my idea now is to go and loop um, a guy rope between both zips and then peg it out so he's going to be stuck in there in the morning fingers crossed if I wake up first I'll uh, try and set the camera up opposite his tent see you soon right so it's coming up 2 o'clock and um, I managed to tame him but Bushman Mick saw me and was like signal him because he thought I was lost so I've gone over and spoke to him and explained to him what I was doing so hopefully he doesn't tell them either uh, so what I've had to do is I've had to go through see the zips come down we've got one on this side and one on that side I've had to go through one zip loop to the second zip and come back to the end of the guy rope tie like a lasso knot and then cinch that up to the other zip and then peg out so we'll see what happens. Right, hopefully I should be uh, up first. Good morning. So it's a little after half past five. You can see behind me so here. It's starting to get a little bit light. I've uh, not heard from Donna's yet. Let's see how he reacts on that. It's only a little it's not a practical joke in it, but it's the first of many you guys that gave me absolutely loads of ideas. So thanks very much for that. You know my email address will still be in the uh, description box. If you've got any more ideas, let me know. Yeah. 
<laughs> Why are you fucking going up? Well, so that didn't work. Tied his bottom ribs together, and then the walkie talkies I brought out must have been too close to that one, so they started interacting with each other, walking up. And obviously, he tried to get out, and then I didn't realise he's got two way zips. So <laughs> the top one is just zipped down instead of obviously zipping up. So you must think of something different, especially when he's not in the bandicoot. This is what happens when you don't use this equipment. You don't know it. <laughs> there he goes, look sneezing. Never mind her. Uh. Right, let me know something different. I've stabbed him anyway. Right, I'd say these are just about done now. So I'll to take them off and get them eaten. Right, well, happy breakfast time, people. That verse sausage first thing in the morning. <laughs> oh. Right, I'm going for a bit. Oh. Can you turn it off? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, gear held up well, uh, snug back all weather shelter, hammock cocoon, and hammock. Um, my pegging out points lasted really, really well. Didn't have to get up in the middle of the night and rectify them or anything. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment, let me know what you think about this one. And if you're not already, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.